Welcome to Harmony Talk, a podcast about dreamers and doers. Hear people from all walks of life, inventors, authors, artists, and entrepreneurs. Tell us about their dreams, how they fulfilled them, and the moment they knew there was no turning back. This podcast is sponsored by A.M. Skyer, a third-generation family insurance business started in 1920. I'm your host, Todd Stevens. Today, I'm joined by a true gentleman and well-known artist, Juan Espino. Juan is the owner of Looking Glass Art Gallery, located at the historic Silk Mill Building in Hawley, Pennsylvania. Juan, welcome to our program. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to have you with us here today, Juan. Juan, you paint in such a unique, colorful folk art style that marries history, architecture, and the human experience. What inspired you to begin painting? Before I to answer this very interesting question, I will express my appreciation to the people that make possible to have the record of the people who has some dream and they can produce some results to improve our culture or still of life. And particular, I want to thank you and everybody who in my artistic career has supported me and always encouraged me to continue. Thank you for inviting me. Now, answer your question. I have two important passion in my life. One is art. The other is history. Those two subjects became only one that I want to express through my paintings. We are living different times. Modernization is coming to change many, many things. Technology, everything has improving and changing. And part of the history sometimes is in jeopardy. I have seen and participated in some actions try to avoid the destruction of history. For 10 years, I had the honor to be the chair man of the Historical Preservation Committee of the Wayne County Historical Society. That gave me the opportunity to know what our county history is about. And there are many interesting places to preserve. So I start doing basically my paintings, trying to depict a new architecture style for me, something different than the traditional style of my country. I became more interesting step by step to try to paint the buildings that has to be through the history that future generations, they will see all how magnificent, how good was the construction of those historical places. It's really amazing, isn't it, Juan, when you think about the work and the time that was put into building some of these structures that you've depicted in your art, not only are they magnificent themselves, but also the people who created them. And that's one thing you've always been absolutely on a mission to incorporate into your art is the people. I'd like to ask why you find the people so important to incorporate in those pieces that you create. Through the years, I became aware that my style of the paintings, they call naive, innocent. And it was around 1890s when Henri Rousseau from France was discovered, by the way, by Picasso. And in this moment, Henri Rousseau became the father of a new style after the Impressionism, the Fauvism, and now it became the naive style created by Rousseau. But the naive style is basically folk art, the art of the people. There are four elements in this style that I feel perfect. No professional or formal training, the lack of perspective, the use of primary colors, and the most important thing, storytelling. So in each one of those pieces, you can see and you can create your own story or the painting is giving part of the story in the painting. When you take a look of Grandma Moses, I'm using this sample right now, you can see all her memories of the childhood in the farms, how the houses was, and give you some feeling of pleasure, tranquility, and the most important thing for me is to see the viewer smiling when they saw my paintings. This is the most gratifying moment I receive from my paintings when people 
has a smile when they are looking at. For anyone who hasn't seen your art, Juan, I could say that you are absolutely correct, that your style brings upon people emotion, and oftentimes that emotion is a smile, happiness in many ways. And I think that's such a talent that I am curious to know, at what point in your career, you mentioned no formal training being one of the, the pillars of, of art naive or folk art. At what point in your journey did you realize, I have a talent for painting? So it will sound a little strange, but until today, I never think about it <laughs> because I don't think I have a talent. The only thing I have is some kind of passion, love to try to express myself to the paintings and try to share the joy I have when I see beautiful places and then try to share with another viewer. Talking about the talent, I have met many, many artists they have a real talent. Like I expressed to you, I'm only a painter. I'm not an artist. Yes, and that's amazing that you consider yourself a painter, not an artist. And I think it really demonstrates how much respect you have for the art community in general. Well, let me put it this way. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I'm in one room at the Sky Building talking with you. And before that, I take a look all around the walls, and one of the magnificent pieces I saw, it was painted by my, my inspiration, David Swillinger. He was an extraordinary artist that I have the honor to meet, and in some point, he gave me some encouragement to continue painting. David and Jane Swillinger became a close friends for me. And my admiration for David's work, it was so far to see the beautiful of the Impressionism style and how they picked, particularly the work that he was doing for the Dorflinger Museum. I became so close to him that the first exhibit I have at the Looking Glass Gallery when I opened was dedicated to David Swillinger. And right now, I'm looking to one of his magnificent pieces depicting the White Flower Festival. Yes. And of course, you're talking about the Dorflinger Sedan Wildlife Sanctuary, where they have the Wildflower Music Festival every year. It's a beautiful setting and has inspired many artists indeed. And I know one that some may know, your journey has started in Mexico. And you were on a different path before you picked up the brush to make it more of your life's work, if you will, to produce paintings and those smiles, if you will. Can you tell us what your career path was originally before you came to becoming a painter, as you say? At the time when I started looking through something that today we call art, I really didn't have for my early age any acknowledgement about that. Six years old, by accident, to be in a place when I saw pieces of paintings depicting situations that I never imagined at my age that could happen and to have been painted. That was the beginning, and they call in the Spanish word, retablos. Okay. Smaller paintings depicting scenes? The small paintings depicting situations that divine intervention saved the life of many people. And hundreds, thousands of those paintings are in Mexico, in Latin America, at large, Spain, because it was one of the early expressions of folk art giving thank you for something or some intervention to save the life of something that they call miracle. So when I saw that, I didn't never put attention to this. Because, you know, so I understand our brain works in different fashion. So it was so many years later when I saw again some of those pieces. And really, it was so fresh, so beautiful, the expression, the way that it was produced, that inspired me to start trying to do it in the same way, depicting something different to a miracle. But it was to depict something that I was there. 
And when you first started one, would you say that you immediately took to it? Were you Did you create something on your first try that was, oh my goodness, I can do this? Remember that motivation is part of what make possible to do things. But inspiration is the complement of the motivation. So if you put those elements together, it's possible that you get something different and something that is very, very personal. So, of course, my love for my culture, my ethnic origin, and my attention to some kind of today's sport called to me to start painting scenes in the field with horses and people and doing different things that is a traditional in my culture. Absolutely. And I'm sure growing up in Mexico, particularly the town where you were with the architecture present, the inspiration was really all around you, I would assume. Not only the art, but also the architecture. And like you said, the culture, the people. And I heard it once said that when you first started, people would come to your house and admire what you were doing, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you really took up as a pastime. Am I correct in that regard? Don't think of for the city of Meyer. I think they liked what I was doing and they found the easy way to get my paintings, telling me I love it, I like it. And my answer is, take it. Why this easy way? Because at this point in time, because my work, my career, I start having so much stress. And the only way to put my stress down, I found like a painting. It was some kind of therapy, occupational therapy today, everybody know. So really my goal, it was to put my stress down, start painting. Now it was extra bonus. Somebody like my paintings, well, take it. <laughs> That's amazing. My goal was, it was complete. So your goal was actually the process of creating something to reduce your stress. And once you created that piece, it wasn't the piece that was of importance to you. It was the process. Yes. And that's absolutely amazing. Well, for so many people who have seen your work, I'm sure they're scratching their heads saying, oh, my goodness, I would love to have been one of those people invited to Juan's house in Mexico to see a painting on the wall. And he just said, take it. <laughs> <laughs> What a great way to share not only love and a passion that you have with others. It just seems like such a giving gesture to do that. And you've brought so much joy to people through your work, through your paintings, as you say. I can imagine the people who have those, I'm sure still have them displayed proudly in their homes, offices, etc. Well, I will tell you, I feel so honored and happy that sometimes they send me pictures of uh, family celebrations and I can see in the wall some of my paintings say until out there. <laughs> That's amazing. And not only bringing joy to them, but also to people who visit them. And then it's unique that that joy eventually has come back to you in a way, which is absolutely wonderful. And I have to ask you, when you were creating those pieces in your loft, when you were at home in Mexico, could you ever have dreamed that we would be sitting here this many years later talking about your career as an artist? No, in my wildest dream. Ah, that's absolutely amazing. Let me tell you, just looking to the walls in this beautiful room, I saw something that confirmed what I was telling you, that my favorite word in English, is serendipity. Yes, an excellent word. And right away, serendipity is coming in this room because I saw the world without thinking I will see the world to use in this conversation. You need, you know what I mean? Uh, yes, absolutely. And y y would you call your life serendipitous to this point, Juan? Yes, indeed. I will tell you everything is coming in some way that will sound strange but has been designed before us. The path is there, and we have to start walking to this path. It's, it's, it's something difficult to try to explain. At this moment came to my mind the words that my father told me, of course, in Spanish. I will try to find a translation. It's don't matter where you are. What's matter is to know who you are. 
I don't know if the translation means something, but that's me. I really, I enjoy my life in Mexico. I feel that I accomplish few things for myself, for my family, and for my community. I was activist in different events. I did very interesting things that until today are there. And when I relocate over here, the only thing I want to do was continuing what normally I was doing in a different country, with different language, with different cultures, and try to assimilate myself in my new country that today is where I am. Well, you have done a remarkable job, not only of being a tremendously talented, and I will call you an artist, I hope you don't mind. I know you'll only call yourself a painter. But if I could just go back to serendipity for a moment, but not only have you done a wonderful job as, as an artist and a historian at that, because you are preserving these scenes, not only around your local area, but also New York City. You mentioned Mexico, these places, and your art has been displayed in so many other places. People are seeing it and becoming inspired through it. But as I promised, I wanted to go back to serendipity. And perhaps folks don't understand exactly how serendipitous your life has been. And we can certainly share some things with them. So you're in Mexico and you happen to meet your wife in Mexico, who happens to be American. Talk about serendipitous and talk about how you wind up being where you are today from a location, geography speaking, correct? The first thing I got to say to you, how lucky I am. How lucky I am to have my family and how lucky I am to have so many friends and people who in some way or another help me to do the things that I love to do. Yes, my children are an extraordinary part of my family. I'm so happy to be here because they could realize what they wanted to do. And this is something very important because this country, United States of America, is the only one that I know when people can pursue and accomplish the dreams that they have the opportunity. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter where you are coming, doesn't matter what color do you have, what religion, you are a person. And in this way, this is the best thing that happened to me, to be here and try to pursue what I wanted, what I dreamed, and try to do, and I'm doing. You certainly are. And that's just amazing. You've said that so well, that when you talk about opportunity and you talk about having a dream, something we take for granted in this country is that if you do have a dream, as you've had through your life, you can try to pursue that dream. And I think about all the artists that are out there around the world who may have an amazing amount of talent, as we say, who may have the skills needed, and they certainly have a dream, but that art may never be realized. And what a shame that is in so many ways. Well, it's a little difficult to try to assimilate your own work and basically your motivation. And I understand art is so difficult for somebody who has survived. And the talent of so many artists is not possible to be known by the people. Through 25 years of the life of the Looking Glass Gallery, I have seen extraordinary artists and magnificent artwork. We are talking now about David, and I can talk about Howard Becker. Yes, certainly. And historical talking, I can talk the most important artist ever born in Wayne County, Jenny Augusta Bronscombe from Hostel. And all these people has extraordinary talent. Plus, they have the opportunity to share the artwork to the public, and that's what they became very well known. When many, many years ago, I opened a book of history, and I saw the Thanksgiving painting by Jenny Bronscombe of the pilgrims arriving in Plymouth. I never believed that at some point I will be in the place when she was born. Even I didn't know about that. Serendipitous again. Yeah. So when I was walking for first time in my life in Main Street Hostel, 
at the McRory Drugstore window, I saw those magnificent pieces of art, Impressionism, that caught my attention. I say, I need to know who is this artist. It's so beautiful. 50 yards walking in the street, I saw a door open and leaning in the wall, paintings very similar to the paintings I saw in the corner. Two months later, I attend one of the fundraisings of the Wayne County Public Library that was a tour of the historic houses in Honsdell. And I saw that almost each one of the houses in the historic district, they have a painting very similar to the paintings that I saw months before. I need, I feel the need to know who is the artist because it's extraordinary. And you know what? I have the opportunity to meet Howard Baker. Ah, Howard Becker, yes. And Howard Becker, for any listener that doesn't know, is a, a gentleman who had painted many scenes in a similar style of Wayne County and the surrounding areas in Pennsylvania. So if we are talking about to preserve history through the art, Howard Becker is the best sample. And some point in time, has to be at this point, six, seven years ago, I became a curator of two exhibits at the Wayne County Historical Society. That allowed me to learn more about Howard Baker and to have the opportunity to have in my hands those magnificent pieces of work. Until today, I fell in love with the work of Howard Baker. And precisely, when I was doing the painting of the silk mill, in another wall I saw the painting of Howard Baker of the Delaware Hudson Canal at White Mills. And I say, this is it. I'm looking to Howard, how preserved the history. This disappeared. It's over. But the painting is giving you the historic information that we have, or this county had 100 years ago, or more than 100 years ago. And this is exactly the realization why I continue to be focused to try to paint the most interesting building situations around not only the county. Now I extend a little bit more to the state and national, and one day I will finish with the world painting. <laughs> you'll need a larger wall, that's for sure. But uh, I certainly hope you'll do that and continue to do that. When you mentioned a couple of things, I just wanted to hit on one, the silk mill. And uh, for our listeners, if they're not familiar with it, Juan's Gallery is located in the historic Wellwood Silk Mill in Hawley, Pennsylvania. The silk mill is, uh, I believe at the time, the largest bluestone building created and uh, housed a silk mill among many other things through the years. And Juan has created a depiction of the silk mill in his style. And the dimensions of the painting are quite large. Juan, do you know the actual dimensions of the silk mill painting? I think that this is 48 inches by 36. Oh, okay, sure. It gives you the appearance that it's much larger than that <laughs> when you're standing in its presence. Is that fair to say? You're right. <laughs> I apologize. It's six by four, six feet by four. Sorry. Well, you know, you had me for a moment because I was thinking, not only am I amazed by your work, but I was amazed by how what you had mentioned to be a relatively conservative size seemed to me like it took up the whole wall. <laughs> no, thank you so much for helping to remind. Oh, no, that's fine. And your gallery, I know we're running low on time, but I have to ask, your gallery, Looking Glass Art Gallery in the Silk Mill and Holly, features artists other than yourself. And I know you're just a painter, as you say, Juan, but why do you feel it's important to feature those folks in addition to your work in your own gallery? Because the gingerbread gallery that was in Holly, after the gallery in Pratt's building, that's where we are right now. It was closed. I feel that it was an, a vacuum, a cultural vacuum in the area. And at this point, I was trying to assemble local artists that we could start working together as a network of communication, that you have a book of art and need to see that, and you have it 
let's start exchange information and have some opportunity to share. If there are some exhibit, let's come together and try to promote ourselves as a group. So we create the Lake Region Art League. Never was a 501c3 because we didn't want to go in the formal process. What we wanted was to have communication and net that we could work together. So that made possible that thanks to Molly Rogers, that she was in those days the director of the Holy Public Library. She was so kind to accept our request to have exhibits in the library, to raise money for the library, and to have the opportunity to show the artwork of this group of artists, including David Swillinger and many of the local artists. I can recite all the names. So we did that a few times, and one of the most successful was at the settler scene. Jeannie Gerlinger was so kind to offer the opportunity to use the settler scene as a place to exhibit the gallery. Now, the visitor center is coming to construction. I was so honored to be part of the volunteer group. And in some point, the visitor center is done. And uh, we have to find some use for that. I talked with Anera de Jong, and she allowed me to create a gallery in the visitor center, at least for the time that in some point the visitor center became busy with their own programs or whatever it was. For seven months, we have the opportunity to have a gallery in Hansel in the visitor center. When the program was over, I found the same day, serendipity, that the place was empty and that was the Skyer building, Rhinus Skyer building. I told with the owners, and a week later, I started working to create the gallery, the Looking Glass Gallery, 25 years ago. I thank Dr. Pardin, I thank Rhinus, and that gave me the opportunity to invite the same group of artists to be what the artwork has to be exhibited. Myself, I was in the back room because I thought and until today that the talent of those artists was better one million times better than my own talent. Plus, the style was so different that really people could not appreciate it until it started moving and develop little by little how the people start accepting the naive style that's a part of a movement of art. I think it's so unique and refreshing to hear you say that you respect these artists so much that you feel their work is in some way more attractive than yours, which is just such an amazing message. And really, I think, is just a complete definition of who you are as a person, putting other people first, and certainly the respect you have for the art community. And you are just a tremendously passionate person, Juan. And I will tell you, just as someone who has one of your works in my house, that I think you have a tremendous talent, and I call it art. And it's been so wonderful having you here today. You are someone who has definitely found a way to depict what we all see around us in a manner that is so relatable and brings a smile to our face. On behalf of everyone who's seen your paintings, I'd like to say thank you. Todd, thanks so much. Thank you to the people that make possible to put together and other people that share experiences, dreams, and things that we can do together. Thank you so much, Juan. We've been speaking with Juan Espino, folk art painter, Looking Glass Art Gallery, located in the Holly Silk Mill is where you can find him, or lookingglassartgallery.com. Thank you for joining us for Harmony Talk, presented by A.M. Skyer, a third-generation family insurance business started in 1920. I'm Todd Stevens. For everyone out there, keep dreaming and doing. <laughs>